second last keynote speaker is a highly appreciated in his field. He has published more than 300 uh, seminar or journal papers, and that is something else. He has also received a Nokia Foundation Award in 2015 uh, for his achievements in mobile communications research. And while, while we're getting mic'd up, we will play his song, and it's right this time. Hyvä ja kaunista. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, to explain this song, this song comes from my, my hometown. I'm not originally from Oulu, but coming from southern Ostrobotnia, and we are very proud from our village boys, Kolmas Nainen. And this was really hot uh, album when I was young. Uh, I was asked to talk about <coughs> a little bit about our 5G research activities in Oulu. And we are boldly claiming that, yes, Oulu is home of 5G. And since I come from university, I, I have this time, let's say, university, university view of this. Um, at university, we are uh, carrying out uh, our 5G research in a Center for Wireless Communications Research Unit. We also used to have our own identity our own brand, our own logos, but now we are pushed to, to belong to the university. University clan, which is now promoting itself as Arctic University. So we are very Arctic these days. We were founded in 95, and we have grown to be one of the largest academic research groups in our field globally. And the reason for this growth is, is not just our, our excellence, it's also because of huge amount of industry around us, in Oulu, we have the most vital uh, research community and let's say, let's say R, R and D I community, not just research, but also development and innovation community, focusing on future wireless services and products. In, not just in Finland, but whole Europe. Maybe also one of the three biggest hubs globally. So we have been operational more than 10, 20 years and these days, our focus has been on 5G research activities. Something about our, our past, it was a good decision to found Silversea back then. This has boosted dramatically our publication activity, especially in terms of number of doctoral theses coming out from our group. Uh, but our role in this ecosystem is a little bit unique compared to, let's say, any other similar place. <clears throat> so we have been around since early 90s and our focus is to be always ahead of industry, say 10 years in the development scale. Uh, we started uh, back, back in, in mid 90s, at those days CDMA 3G was hot topic and now industry is talking about 5G which we started already back in 2008. These days I'm making a research agenda for, for our group for the next 10 or so years. So it means that we are already planning our activities towards 6G. We don't even know what 5G will entail exactly, but we are looking at 6 already. To get to the point that we are ready to move towards 6th generation, <coughs> uh, it requires lots of 5G oriented uh, research activities. So we cover pretty large scale of, of uh, 5G related research areas related to radios, related to networks, related to future applications coming from different directions. And also we are looking at what can you do with all this fancy technology in terms of making new businesses. So we are really these days, we are for example challenging the current operator, mobile operator driven business models to generate something totally new and to make the future digitized world happening much faster. Uh, <clears throat> related to 5G, 
Uh, there are, of course, many cornerstones that it's built on. Technological cornerstones. We want to have faster internet connectivity wirelessly, of course. There will be lots of tiny little sensors measuring humans, our environment and so on, really making our lives easier. And you all have heard about these automotive cars, driverless cars, and those also require totally new communication means, uh, which means that super low Response, short response time between the network and the automotives, as well as super high reliability. This does not exist yet, and my claim is that it will not happen in 5G, and we need to look it beyond 5G towards 6G area. Uh, besides building, <coughs> building, let's say, hardcore technology research expertise, which can be directly utilized by, by society, by companies and so on, through our trained experts, through the publications and scientific uh, uh, theses we make. We are also looking all the time new collaboration models with industry. This February we launched officially something quite unique and new related to Nokia Bell Labs collaboration here in Oulu and we established a joint research center for future connectivity with certain selected research areas. I'm now repeating this same and generalizing it with any other companies, not just in Finland, but anywhere. And uh, we call it industry academia. It means that people move from industry to work with us in our labs, with our researchers, and our researchers move to companies under NDA and work together with their engineers. And this is something quite, quite intriguing and hopefully we can have some new announcements uh, fairly soon. Uh, then, why we claim that Oulu is home of 5G? First of all, uh, we have the balls to claim that. Secondly, we started to build 5G test network already three, more than three years ago to Oulu area and it's the first open uh, uh, test network uh, um, that exists for 5G uh, demonstration and, and product development. The goals of our test network are, of course, to promote our research, but more than that is to help our, our collaborating companies to come and test their own solutions, services, test tool, whatever products they want to uh, try to launch in the first phase of 5G. And uh, uh, we aim at being one of the uh, uh, selected sites for large-scale European 5G pilots. Pilots which start to take place after roughly two years from now. Uh, multiple companies from this region, and there's a similar activity in Helsinki region as well, and these two networks will be connected together physically fairly soon. Uh, so we have lots of equipment already installed, and this is ever-expanding process, depending on how much real uh, uh, operator-grade equipment we have available. We can already now do lots of different real implementations related to 5G. We can do all sorts of virtual reality type with, which require really high-speed wireless connectivity type of demonstrations. We can do different types of intelligent environment sensing and censoring type of applications. And most importantly, this might be really uh, um, uh, cryptic for you, but the network and the intelligence is coming close to the local network. There is a new network architectural element bringing cloud so type of services right next to the users installed at the base station close to the users. That will dramatically change the type of services we will experience, the amount of intelligence that mobile networks will have, and hopefully when this is uh, commercialized, we will really see the full potential of mobile devices in operation in, 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 in these networks. Currently, mainly we use our smartphones as wireless connection to internet without no real added value on, on the fact that we are able to move around and our position can be very accurately tracked and we are offered 
context-related services. So the network comes after users. Users in the future will not go after services uh, in browsing internet as we do today. That is a major, major, major change. All kind of equipment exists. We have all kind of gadgets in the lab. We have already a monster size 5G proof of concept radio developed jointly with Nokia engineers here locally. And they are, uh, let's say, almost one cubic meter size. And that needs to be squeezed into fire alarm size in a few years' time. So there's still a lot of engineering work to be done. What do we use this test network for? I would like to give you one example. So the new 5G radio, which is with really state-of-the-art, pushing everything to the limits in terms of physical capabilities, data rates, and so on, uh, it is used in next winter, uh, Korean Winter Olympics in collaboration with our Korean partners, where we are demonstrating some of the 5G capabilities during the Olympic Games at Olympic Arena. So the collaborators are both from Europe and from Korea, but the fact is that the network which is based here in Oulu, the radios developed by Nokia here in Oulu, those form the key components to this Winter Olympics demonstration. Uh, the type of uh, services that will be demonstrated, they include something related to multimedia displays in the bus in the Olympic Game Village, uh, VR, AR type of, type of uh, uh, hotspot solutions in specific locations, also transmission of really high quality video during the games, as well as some positioning based applications. Uh, the Oulu based, Oulu let's say promotion takes place at the IoT Street uh, right next to, uh, I believe this is the ice hockey arena, uh, uh, where we are going to show some uh, added value services to the, uh, to the Olympic tourists, trying to find out what is going where and what were the latest results, for example, in some skiing event, and there they can find some extra statistics on, 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 on athletes and so on and so on. So, like I said, 5G is on the way, it's really happening, and uh, there is a certain predetermined schedule to introduce it to the markets. Standardization is ongoing, it will be more or less finished one year from now, fine-tuning will take place after that, and the first products are out there at the markets uh, uh, during, during uh, uh, 2020. 5G will enable totally new types of business models which are not dependent on current uh, mobile operators. Networks are coming indoors. Public spaces like this theater hall will have their own network. It's uh, fine-tuned to the services required by this, this space uh, to have enhanced user experience, human experience, whoever is visiting here. It's totally different requirements in ice hockey arena or hospital or some school building. So we need to differentiate the types of service offerings and to optimize the performance from the user perspective. We need different uh, technological solutions. We need different types of skills. All operators are not able to do everything. So that will really change dramatically the way operators will behave in the future towards customers. So what are we doing at the university uh, as our target will be 6G? So 5G research is surely disappearing from our research agenda. It will be there a couple of more years for sure, but we are already now thinking about what is the next big change that we have to really do. And, uh, and like I said, this ultra-reliable low-latency communications is one technological major leap we have to do. The role of data will increase dramatically in the future. Already now, mobile networks are able to collect all sorts of user-based data, but they are not allowed to be served or, let's say, offered to third parties 
in development of other type of services, value-added services based on our behavior. When the networks become much more dense, they come close to us users, they are really small size, even one body can involve, uh, have its own wireless network connecting all sorts of sensors, monitoring our vital, vital signs and so on. There will be much more data collected from the networks. Ten years from now, the value comes, at least latest ten years from now, it's already happening. Value and added value comes in, uh, from the data that we collect from all kinds of uh, wirelessly connected devices, smart processing of that data and making new types of services and products utilizing this huge amount of data. This is the next big driver for whole OLU, hopefully 6G ecosystem. This is the work we'll be doing the next 10 years. Thank you. Any questions? No? Yes? I think everybody can hear me. I don't, please don't go. Uh, are you having currently, uh, outside Europe, I'm ready to have a testing program. I just read the other day that Ericsson is quite actively in the Oriental countries doing some testing. Outside Europe? Uh, of course, all, all uh, major hardware manufacturers have their own independent developments directly with operators. For example, uh, both Nokia and Ericsson, for example, are working with NTD Docomo in Japan. They both are very active in Korea. Ericsson is very active in North America and so on and so on. And they have very well-defined, specific, bilateral, let's say, uh, demonstration activities. They are not public. What is unique in our 5G test network that we want to keep it public, it's built uh, mainly on taxpayers' money. We are requested to have this openness and we are happy to have this openness. We don't build it for just for our own, own joy. Uh, but if I compare from research community perspective, where is Europe uh, compared to the rest of the world, I think this OLU-based 5G test network was really the first public test network released anywhere. One of my colleagues was just a couple of weeks ago uh, as an expert, he was in expert review panel in United States of America making selections who will get to build their 5G test networks. So it means that they are maybe four years behind Europe, but we should not fool ourselves when they get things going, they go much faster than we in Europe always. Other questions? Okay, thank you and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Matti.